this will be the kickoff of this uh, webinar. So, hello everyone. I still see that people are coming in. So we'll 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 start with a with an introduction. Uh, my name is uh, Judith Frankel. I'm a director of resource sharing solutions at Ex Libris. Um, Good morning, good afternoon. I don't know where you're coming from. I do know that we have a, a very big audience today. Today, we're going to be covering uh, the Xlibris resource sharing directory. That is actually an option that you already have on your AMAs. Uh, it is something that uh, is, um, it's, a, it's a functionality that's available both for Alma resource sharing and for uh, those uh, customers that are using uh, Rapido for resource sharing. And um, I'm going to start with uh, sharing uh, a few slides. Um, I'll stop at some point so we can um, maybe so that I can ask so that I can ask, see if there are some questions that you want to ask or or some type of discussion. And I'll also um, do a, a small demo so you can see this live, how it works, how you opt in into the directory. And then at the end, uh, we'll wrap it up and uh, hopefully we'll have time also for more questions. So I'm going to start by sharing uh, my uh, my desktop and I hope you can see it. So just give me a second to start sharing. Here we go. Okay, I hope you're seeing this. I think you are. Okay, so let's talk about the Xlibris resource sharing directory. Uh, so as I said, what we want to cover today is what is the resource sharing directory? How does it help my library or maybe other libraries? How do you opt in in the directory? So let's start with what we have, what we know today. So in Alma, uh, in order to do resource sharing, resource sharing is done on a peer to peer peer to peer base, uh, meaning that you need to define uh, partner information, uh, both for the from the borrowing side and the lending institution. So I'm just going to take an example. If I'm Harvard um, and I want to do resource sharing with MIT and we're using uh, Alma resource sharing, I need to have uh, from the Harvard side a partner record uh, for MIT. And from MIT, uh, from the MIT side, I need to define Harvard uh, as a partner. What is this uh, partner information? It's usually information of um, very basic information, uh, but it's a lot of information on uh, uh, the name of the library, uh, shipping information, contact person, emails, um, currencies, uh, a lot of information. Now, uh, one of the things that uh, has to be clear is that uh, if uh, 100, 100 libraries want to do peer-to-peer -peer with Harvard, 100 institutions most likely will need to define, not most likely, for sure, will need to define the same partner information in their institutions. So we have actually 100, and sometimes it's more, institutions creating this partner record, adding this information, maybe adding mistakes to it um, in order to do resource sharing with Harvard. So if you multiply that, it's a, it's hard work, okay? It's hard work, not only in the sense of the particular information, the particular library that is doing um, resource sharing uh, with you. So it's not only the MIT Harvard example, it is um, when, when we talk about uh, resource sharing, we, we need to think big, right? It's about networks. So we need to think that uh, many libraries are actually doing the same. And this is exactly what the directory wants to, uh, as a first step, is what the di directory wants to um, solve or, or mitigate, okay? So the directory, what is the directory? It's, it's a central place. Uh, where you can um, easily create partners to enable resource sharing without having to deal with the partner configuration. And by the partner configuration, I gave some examples like uh, the emails, uh, uh, the shipping addresses, et cetera, uh, but also locate profiles uh, that uh, might need to be defined um, and this type of information. 
So we'll take a look by the way while while we're talking. And if you have two uh, two screens and you have the the roles, uh, you might want to walk together with me with your Alma and try to see what I'm showing you because the directory is already there and it's uh, already uh, in use. And we have um, many libraries that already appear in the directory. So. What, what is the process here? First of all, it's available for all Almas uh, and uh, Rapidos to use. Uh, the idea is that uh, you look for a particular partner that uh, you want to work and you can uh, copy them into your uh, institution. I'll, I'll, it, shortly, I'll be, I'll be showing you this in the system. And then what happens, you probably want to ask me, everyone will start doing resource sharing with me? The answer is no. Um, again, uh, as I mentioned with my initial slide, uh, for the peer-to-peer -to, -peer, uh, to work, you need to have uh, both uh, partners defined. So uh, the reason I'm saying this is you don't need to worry if you add yourself to the directory, you don't need to worry about um, starting to receive uh, requests uh, from hundreds of libraries that you're not interested uh, in working with. Um, the idea here is to ease the process of adding the partner records from both sides, but still that communication um, between libraries where you say, uh, I would like to do resource sharing with you and the other library agrees to it uh, still needs to happen. So both sides need to uh, download the partner record in order for uh, being able to use Alma resource sharing. Um, again, the idea is to make it, uh, to make this connection easier. Actually, it's it's possible already now. We uh, The idea of the directory is to change the workflows that you're currently doing by creating this uh, partners by scratch instead of just copying, it, copying them from the directory. At the end of the day, it, the same most of the times, I suppose, the information needed is actually um, the same information. And another improvement is that um, you might start to shift the way you're doing resource sharing today. So this is something I've been uh, seeing in the field, actually, um, not only uh, from uh, the Rapido side, but also from the Alma side, uh, desire to make use of the system. So uh, I've uh, talked to many uh, resource sharing librarians that are telling me that they're starting to do peer to peer um, with other libraries in the world, even though they might be using uh, other resource sharing solutions on top of Alma. So, uh, the idea here is that uh, there, something's happening and we want to make it easier for you to be able to um, create these new partnerships. So the big question is, uh, why uh, should I join? And, and, and here I have to, to a few answers for you. Um, I, I think this is a new thing and might, it might take a little bit uh, of time to digest, uh, especially to understand the value. Uh, and, uh, and here's where I come and I say, hey guys, it's not only for the benefit of your own institution, it has value for the community. Um, and, and we're really trying to enable a transformative uh, way of doing resource sharing. So again, if, if I go back to my initial example, um, you might try to say, okay, so I copy the MIT partner, so I've saved five minutes instead of, uh, you know, I've saved, I don't know, 10 minutes um, by doing this in one in one minute. I'll show you how. Uh, but again, we're, we're talking here about resource sharing. Resource sharing is a communal effort, but uh, by doing this, by putting your partner uh, information in the directory, you're actually helping not only one institution, but the other 100 institutions that might want to start doing resource sharing with you. So the first thing is here, it's it's really a communal effort. We are trying to uh, make resource sharing uh, as open as and accessible as possible. Again, it doesn't matter uh, what, if you're using other uh, resource sharing platforms, and I'll show you how this can be achieved. And um, Again, the, the idea, the main idea here is that uh, by opting in, you're letting uh, other Alma institutions or Rapido institutions to, to know how to interact with you, um, uh, regardless of your preferred resource sharing platform. And we'll, we'll talk about this a little bit later when we, when we go into the demo part of this uh, session. 
So why, 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 why do we have the need today? Why isn't it open today? So first of all, uh, there are too many resource sharing tools today. Um, silos, there are silos. Uh, just to give you an, uh, uh, an example from, this is a live example from uh, uh, customers that I have worked with. It is almost impossible to do resource sharing with libraries that opt not to be part of Walter. And it's not that I'm encouraging you guys not to be part of Walter at all, but if some, if an institution wants to be out of uh, that game, um, we need to, uh, as a community, uh, give some options here. And uh, the peer-to-peer -peer solution for Alma is is a very good example. And um, and 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 by adding yourselves uh, to the directory, uh, you're doing, um, you know, like. Like with the moon, it's a small step, but a big step for humanity. So it's a big step for resource sharing. So I think um, that uh, this is what we're trying to do. But the second thing is that really we have an asset that we haven't um, um, used enough. And it's this big Alma community that we have. It's a worldwide community. So we're not talking only about regional. We're talking about um, something that's uh, uh, beyond uh your own regions, and when you're looking for that little peril, that that uh, um, that resource that is uh, not held by your networks, but it's held by a very specific library, uh, this is where um, the the directory will make it easier for you to um, to establish these new connections. So we're almost there, but uh, like uh, in many other uh, efforts, we need to do this together. It is, um, we have a vision of how uh, the resource sharing world could be uh, without giving uh, existing workflows and solutions. So again, we're not asking you to change, uh, um, to give off solutions that you're working on, but uh, to make the, the the directory a success, we really need each of you to uh, opt in into the directory. And again, uh, the idea is that uh, there is no you will not start receiving um, you will not start receiving uh, requests from everyone because of the way the peer to peer works. Uh, so there there isn't uh, here something that you should be worried about. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about how to uh, how uh, you opt in before uh, we go into our demo. Uh, it's a very, very simple process. Actually, I'm going to do it with you, together with you. Uh, it can take a few minutes. There are some decisions that might require a little bit of thinking, uh, but the set setup is really, really simple. And again, it's just a setup what you, where you're actually exposing uh, the information of uh, who you are, where to find you, and uh, what you can loan to um, other institutions. So um, we're going to move to the demo part, but before we go to the demo part, I'm going to stop sharing for a second just to see if there are uh, questions on the chat because I cannot see uh, anything while presenting to you. Yeah, so, so there's a question already, a preliminary question. Uh, so this directory only works when requesting and sending resource sharing requests with other libraries also using Alma. And the answer is yes, using Alma in general, but no, um, not, not uh, always expecting them to be using uh, Alma resource sharing. Okay, so I'll, I'll show a, a little flavor that... Uh, um, where you can still use the directory, uh, but uh, the library that you're working with is uh, working, for example, with Iliad. Okay, so I'll, I'll give that example also in my demo. Um, what I do want you to know is that in the future, I see this directory um, expanding beyond Alma because peer-to-peer -peer relations can be um, ISO type. So any, actually any, um, partners that are working in this way could be defined. So if if I, I still don't know exactly what will be our path, if a library can uh, just share uh, the uh, another partner that is not in Alma, or it will be in a different way where partners can just contribute their information, even if they're not in Alma. 
So I do see the potential of the director, the directory expanding to non alma institutions. Uh, but I think that we need to start with the alma institutions, which is the step that we're missing now. So uh, we'll start with the alma institutions and then um, yes, the idea is to include any ISO actually partner because ALMA can do resource sharing with any ISO uh, partners. So um, I, I do see this as a first step and, and there will be further steps uh, in the process uh, of adding new partners here. Uh, and I think this, this could be really, really helpful. Okay, so I'm going to... I, think there are no more questions. Maybe there will be more after the demo. So we'll start with the demo. And um, this means I need to share again. So give me just one second. I'll share my Alma with you. Okay, so uh, I hope you're seeing this. Uh, I imagine you are. Uh, so this is Alma and uh, we'll go to the partner screen. The partner screen is under fulfillment and uh, here are the partners. And uh, the ones of you that uh, can play with your Alma while I'm uh, presenting, you can do this with me as well. So um, this, is, this has existed for a long time in Alma. This is uh, where your partners, the partners that this, uh, funny partners, but these are the partners that I do resource sharing with. And if I wanted to add a new partner, uh, I would just go here, okay? And start adding a lot of information, profile type, da 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 da, ISO, um, I don't know, contact information, start clicking things here, et cetera, adding addresses, parameters, et cetera. And this is uh, part of the process of adding a partner, okay? And uh, the we what we've recently added, but I think it was a few months ago already, so not that recent, is the community the community tab here. The community tab is actually the directory, and you can see here. Even though this is uh, um, this is uh, one of our test environments or something, you can see here that there are many institutions in the directory. Probably, if you open your own uh, production Alma, you will see many more. Uh, so these are institutions, so we already have uh, many institutions, uh, parts, part of these institutions are Rapido, some of those are not Rapido, uh, are online institutions that have uh, contributed themselves uh, to the directory. And I want to thank Albion College because I've uh, discussed this with them and I mentioned that I will be using their institution as an example. So if there's someone here from Albion, thank you uh, for letting me uh, show this with your, uh, with your record. Um, so I have here Albion College, and if you recall, I don't have Albion College set up as a partner in my institution, but uh, we've discussed this together with Albion, and I want to start doing resource sharing with them. So from this community tab, the only thing that I need to do is uh, click on it. I could, by the way, multiply. I could search for the for Albion College and then just copy the record, the partner record to me. And this is all actually. So remember that 100 institutions or that setting up the record. Actually, this is what it takes for an institution uh, for me to set up a partner, um, copying it from the directory, which is really, really amazing. If we look inside the record, you can see that all of the information that I needed, uh, including uh, the locate uh, information, contact information, all of this, I'm going to close it because I don't know if this is like uh, real information, but uh, you can see here that everything that uh, I needed for uh, contacting Albion has been copied and I have, haven't had to do uh, much more here. So this is the functionality of the directory. This is how you work. It's, it's really nothing, okay? Uh, hopefully, uh, Albion College has copied uh, my institution, uh, Ex Libris Institution. Now we can start doing resource sharing together. What I want to show you now is actually how um, an Alma institution can um, uh, contribute uh, their partner information to this community tab to the Ex Libris directory. So we're going to go to the configuration and you have to have the appropriate roles, which are, uh, I suppose, fulfillment administrative uh, roles. And if I open up here the, the menu, uh, you'll see that you already have an option here called contribute to resource sharing directory. 
and uh, only one um, one link, one one option here, which is the one that we're going to do. Now we're going to do three different separate steps, um, and, uh, and 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 that's all. Uh, it's more me talking to you guys than what it will take to do it. So, if you're already uh, using Alma resource sharing, uh, you already have. Uh, resource sharing libraries. So the first step is creating what's called the resource sharing member, which is the partner actually. And uh, but you, if you're using resource share, uh, resource sharing in Alma, you already have the uh, resource sharing library. So for adding uh, a new member, uh, you will use the from existing resource sharing library, which is what I'm going to demonstrate. But if you don't have a resource sharing library from here for from new resource sharing library, this will open a, a menu where you input all of the information. Again, the information is um, the, 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 the center, the resource sharing library that is doing resource sharing for you the, the, um, in your library. Even if you're not an Alma library, you probably have a desk that is doing resource sharing. And you just need to input all of the information like address, et cetera. Since I, already, I am already uh, doing resource sharing in, in Alma, I'm going to uh, select from existing resource sharing. Uh, you might have in your uh, institutions multiple resource sharing libraries, so you can add uh, the number of libraries that you have. In this case, I only have one desk doing resource sharing, so I'm going to select this particular one, and I'm going to save and continue. And you'll see what happens. So most of the information, and really this is a, a, a weird record, but uh, in, but it, it has all of the information that it's coming from that resource sharing library, including the emails and all that I need, the shipping address, et cetera. I just see here that I'm missing here for uh, my country, so I'm going to add it. I'm almost done. What I'm saying here, this is one thing that I want to show you, is that uh, I'm saying here I manage my request in Alma. So meaning I'm doing resource sharing to Alma, but maybe I am doing resource sharing to Iliad, and this might be uh, the case for many of you. So uh, what I need to do in that case is just add uh, the Iliad information. And of course here I'm talking about that ISO type of connection. So um, also important for me to say that um, for many customers, uh, uh, it's important that uh, you, you have that ISO component of Iliad uh, so that you can uh, do resource sharing directly uh, through, uh, from an Alma customer to Iliad, to, to Iliad if this Alma customer doesn't have Iliad. Okay, but I'm going to create this uh, as an Alma resource, uh, as saying, stating that I manage my request to Alma. Okay, so first step, I talked more than what it really takes to, uh, to, to do this. The two next steps are very important. The second step is a step that might take a little bit more of thinking, and it's called the participating items. Participating items are groups of items uh, that I can create differently. For example, I can create a normal set of um, interlibrary loan uh, sets of items, things that you might already have defined in your terms of use, or I can create uh, a shorter term or a regional term uh, of items that I want to uh, share with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you, I'm actually saying which of my items I am allowing for um, resource sharing. And again, the idea is that you can create many. I might create only one or two with you, but the idea is you can create many. Um, you know what? We're going to create two. This time we're going to create two. This uh, Today I show to the APAC team how to create one, but we're going to create uh, two. So one is normal um, ILL, okay, which is a longer term, let's say, or something. And then I need to do a combination of um, based on material type, item policy, and location. And again, I don't need all of those. And this is where the thinking part uh, happens. So this is uh, something that you might need someone else from your library or where you need to sit down and think a little bit. Now, in terms of peer to peer, this information is not going to be taken. What is going to be taken is the, the terms of use that you've defined. But if you are working with your with Rapido institutions, 
this might allow you in the future also to um, to participate in POTS, which is a possibility, and we're not discussing this today, but uh, another possibility is to do resource sharing with uh, Rapido libraries through POTS. But today I want to focus on it with the peer to peer. I still would like to ask you that if you're joining the directory, to take the time to define uh, the participating items. So I'm going to choose a very simple one where I'm saying, uh, okay, I'm, I'm allowing books, material types that are book and that their item policy is I don't know, maybe two weeks and also interlibrary loan. Uh, I don't know, I can select uh, whatever I want and um, I could leave the location open, but in this case, just to show you how it works, I'm uh, my main library, all of the different uh, sections of my uh, main library are going to play here. And I'm going to add this one. And I said I, I wanted to add another one with you guys. So I'm going to add another one that it's uh, uh, only US, uh, only US ILL, which is more restricted or includes more items, maybe. Um, so it uh, contains, I don't know, books and also, I think. Um, I don't know, it contains also uh, something that makes sense. Uh, this is for returnables, okay? Um, so it contains videos, audio cassettes, if there's still something like that, okay, audio cassette. And um, um, in the US, it's uh, more policies, for example. It's also, again, this is a very restrictive, uh, it's also a, Two week and uh, also six month and also semester loan and also something else. So this is only for the US. And actually, here I'm not limiting it by location, add and close. So I've created two different sets of um, what we call participating items one that it's a really uh, more general one and one that is limited. Next step is adding the physical lending policies. I can add these uh, lending policies without connecting them to any um, to to the items that I to the sets of items that I've created now. But I really want to do this. I think it's important because then what I can do is uh, just say uh, either create a general one for all items or say okay for my normal ILL that we just created now. Um, delivery time is around, uh, I don't know, 10 days, and I'm not limiting this to any region, and loan is uh, um, half a semester, I think, and I, you know, there is a cost or there isn't a cost, add and close, okay? So we're um, adding this one, and now I'm going to add another one for the only US one. So I'm going to create, connect, my only US library here. I, of course, mean only the country, United States. Okay, delivery time may be shorter, five days, and let's say the long period is the same. All right, by the way, we're trying to um, encourage our libraries to do resource sharing uh, between them for free, so I'm not adding cost uh, by purpose, add and close. And I'm, I'm done. Okay. Actually, by doing this next, I can see here the information. Save. I'm done. Okay. Now, uh, this library, the Ex Libris Library, the Ex Libris Institution is part of the directory. And you can go and download my partner record with uh, the ease that we did with the Albion record. And um, and if I want to start doing resource sharing with uh, your library, I hope you're also in the directory and we can do this as easy as that. So this is the whole uh, story beho behind the directory in terms of uh, how to opt in and also um, how to use it, which is really a short uh, story. Um, I'm going to stop now for uh, to see their questions and then uh, I have a few more slides and uh, we'll see uh, how we progress here with the slides. I see a lot of questions, so I'm going to try. Okay, uh, let's see, I'm gonna go by order. 
Okay, so there is one question that I want to. Um, uh, someone couldn't see the partner list in the fulfillment. Can you please repeat how you got there? So, please let me do this for the sake of everyone. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to reshare my Alma and I'll show this again. We have the time. This is what we have one hour. So, again, for those of you that uh, missed it, it's very easy. Okay, so I'm um, in, in Alma. Fulfillment menu. Partners, okay, this is usually where you have your partners. The directory is the community tab. I am going to send you at uh, you're going to have it uh, also here in the recording, but uh, there is already a video that shows this. Um, so you'll be able to. Um, to see all of what I've been showing and also this is being recorded so. Uh, You'll be able to see um, to see it if if you didn't catch it. Okay. Yeah. So now another uh, very important question. So are all the profile types ISO in the directory at this point? Yes. Uh, this is the uh, the partners that we're supporting, but uh, I think that in the future uh, we might be able to support other partners as well. Okay, a very good question also here. If we're using the uh, NC uh, for uh, the, the network zone, resource sharing for a consortium, will, in, will it interfere with the ROTA to begin adding new partners from community partners? So what I envision, so I want to answer this a very good question. So usually when you have a ROTA from the network zone, this uh, will be the, the first ROTA that you're working with. And uh, this is a ROTA that you usually cannot edit, okay? Uh, so at the IC level. So what we're talking about is your additional partners, additional rotas. So you will first um, use download uh, the partner to the institution, like I showed, and then you can, uh, based on that later, create a, a added to a rota that you have. So this shouldn't interfere with your um, with your NC at all. And and of course you you will not add this partner to the NC rota. Okay, some more questions. Can we set the resource sharing function in Alma in the sandbox? Uh, this is a really good question. I believe you can try it. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, I can tell you what you can do in the Rapido sandbox, and uh, but uh, I think you can try it. And uh, um, I don't know. I need to. I need to check what are your your capabilities. Uh, with uh, setting uh, uh, resource sharing in sandboxes. I believe there are many things you can do, but I believe there are also many things you cannot do because uh, resource sharing is a little bit catchy in terms of testing. Um, okay, another question. If you already have uh, a resource sharing an automated fulfillment network, would it make it sense to create a separate resource sharing library when you start doing ISO resource sharing? Um, a separate, this, this is a very general question. It depends how your library is managing resource sharing. I know many resource sharing libraries that have automated uh, fulfillment networks and they only have one resource sharing library and they have this rota that is serving the um, automated fulfillment network and they have other rotas and actually this same library is, uh, serving for, uh, uh, wider outside of the fulfillment network resource sharing. So it depends on you. It usually, um, I've seen libraries that don't have a fulfillment network and have many resource sharing libraries uh, defined in their institution. And I've seen many resource sharing, uh, many institutions that have one resource sharing library, like in my example. So it really depends many, many times this is uh, dependent on uh, physical, uh, how how the institution, you know, how many campuses you have, and then you might have uh, multiple resource sharing libraries. So if you have patrons that are assigned to a particular uh, resource sharing library. Um, so it's very, very dependent more to the, um, it's not related directly to how many partners you're working with, um, but more to how resource sharing in general is being dealt with. It might be, I've seen also research institutions that have 
to resource sharing libraries because they want to deal with uh, things coming from their very close network by one library and all of the other load by a separate team. But this, this, this has to do with a lot of the physicality of the library. If you have more staff, then you, know, you need different staff to deal with things that are being done by your network, or you have separate staff that are de dealing with different things. So it is not direct, directly uh, related to the directory, um, but it depends more how your library sees resource sharing in general. Okay. Let me see. There, there are many questions. Okay. Does a network consortia need to decide to join the directory or can individual institutions join the directory? Okay. This is a politically political question. I will just say that at the institution level, you can, you have the capabilities. I guess that the use, what I've seen, again, I'm sharing with you what I've seen, um, is that, uh, yes, there is the network, the network um, uh, first rota maybe managed by the, by the network. Uh, and then each, each institution has its own resource sharing partners. And, uh, and that this is how you work. You have, you, gain from the network, but of course you have other connections. That's the idea. There are peer peer to peer connections. They can be grouped in different types of rotas. And uh, I believe there's no problem at all with that. Okay. Okay, another great question. Can you limit your participation to only US North American institutions? Yes, you saw that I I, I, I limited um, my terms. Uh, I could limit them by country. What we're planning to add to the directory, I don't know if you noticed that you don't see the terms, um, but we're planning to add visibility to the terms so you can see already by looking at a partner, whether um, they, um, whether they uh, uh, are, you know, they're, I can start connecting with them because they're, they're, they're in North America or not. They're doing only with the terms, uh, terms, the terms are only regional, let's say the United States. Uh, so, um, yes. And again, the way to work now is because you know the institution, you're copying it and still you need to do the both sides. Uh, you probably know who, who they are and you're not just you know, just copying institutions without knowing who they are. So, but we, we are planning to add the terms. So even though you know they're a North American institution, you might also be interested in international and they are providing international. So this is something that uh, it's on our roadmap to add to the directory. Um, but for now, still, as I said, this communication from both sides needs to exist. So most probably when you go to the directory, you know that you're targeting a specific institution you want you want to work with and you can work with. But uh, more to come. It's a good question because it also brings the uh, more to come. Okay, another. Uh, there's so many good questions, and we'll soon need to move to the presentation because there's more details. Uh, can you specify loans versus copy in your set to you? so? So you would lend digitally internationally, but only send physical materials within your home country. Again, I you know the whole digital lending thing is a. <laughs> this is a, and not only a webinar; it could be like a course. Uh, so there is a lot to, to talk about digital lending, and um, uh, so uh, when when we're talking about uh, depends how you're doing your digital lending, but. Again, as I, the, the set that I showed you, um, I think we need to uh, look at it. Um, I don't know how the digital will be uh, here limited if you're doing peer to peer, but um, I think uh, you can, you could create two different sets of partners. Uh, one that is uh, actually including only copies that you're willing to send and loan. And for digitization, I need to think it a little bit more. I have uh, different answers for different products, so it's uh, I don't want to get into that detail now. But uh, take a look at the the options you have and create the different sets, and then you can um, attach them uh, different uh, 
options. I would say that it's a good start would be just uh, contributing your patron record and your your uh, your uh, partner record information, creating a very basic set to start with, and then we can talk. And I'll give you more details on uh, who can help you answer this very specific question in a moment when we go back to the slide. Okay. Okay, is the ad physical lending policy really just a boring resource sharing terms of use? Okay, so again, from peer to peer, Alma to Alma, you are going to um, actually be using the terms of use that you have defined in Alma. If you're uh, planning to join, and it's also a possibility, a Rapido pod, this is replacing the terms of use in Rapido, and this will be the terms of use that will be used. Um, um, and uh, um, so there is a combination here, really. Uh, and we'll see how this evolves in the future. I see there's uh, some technical issues for some people that are seeing things uh, in step one. So we'll talk about what to do if there are technical issues. Um, If you join the directory, will you begin to see other institutions in our partner list and how will we see access them for, for borrowing requests? Again, your institution tab has only those that you've copied. So the community tab, which is the directory, is what you're seeing more institutions and only if you copy them into your, um, into your institution, you will see them in the institution tab. Then the next process will be creating either rotas or letting the system run through. Uh, uh, if you're establishing both sites, uh, you can either add manually the partner record because you want to send a specific borrowing request, or if you add them to a rota, it will work as Alma works today. Um, uh, the usual workflow. So again, by the way, it's very important. This question also is important. We're not changing anything on the Alma workflow. We're just easing the way of creating partners, which you had to do manually. And now if you, if your partner contributes himself, her, uh, herself, itself to the uh, community, to the, to the directory, it will be easier you to copy the information. So again, I just want to make sure this is clear. We're not changing anything in the Alma workflows. We're just making it easier to establish those connections. Okay, last question. I'm, I'm really looking at the last question and if we have more time, uh, we'll come back. Okay, so how do students see the materials in the resource sharing libraries? Um, uh, there is here a confusion about uh, discovery. So here, again, we're not talking about a different way of uh, how your patrons are placing requests. We're just talking uh, about how um, how uh, how to establish this, uh, how to co creating a new way to, an easy way to create new partner records. So if, for example, you're using Alma resource sharing and your patrons are uh, clicking on a create a request, uh, resource sharing request link, they will continue to, to do the same. But if you have new partners, the system will look into these new partners uh, to find the resource. So again, in terms of your students, at least if you're Alma, in terms of your student, nothing changes. They create their request in the same way as they have been creating it, them until now. And um, they are working with the library and the library supplies them back the resources they're looking for. I am going to back, I know there are more questions, so I'll, I'll keep the place where I'm, uh, I'm now. And if I manage to answer, uh, to finish my um, my last slides, the, there, there are some very important uh, details on the last slides, we'll, we'll go back to questions, okay? Or this might, or my new slides will raise more questions. So I'm going to um, share again, and we'll start from where we stopped. Give me a second. So we start, we stopped, at the demo slide and we're going to continue okay so this is for all of you that were experiencing or difficulties or or something first of all want to join are you ready to revolutionize resource sharing yes please join we need you we all need you so think about it okay 
but you might have experienced maybe some some difficulties um, you want to join but still have many questions that were not addressed here today there is a team dedicated to this so their address is here um, and they uh, will be happy if you contact them and they'll help you set you up um, either by doing it together with you or by answering your questions uh, so you can email them directly and the second thing that I wanted to tell you is that uh, actually we are, um, this webinar is the start of uh, the promotion of the directory because we understood that not many people uh, either or understood or knew how to opt in. So uh, you might be receiving an, an email from them. So they are uh, actually, um, they are actually going to start a big uh, outreach to all of our Alma community offering help, documentation, um, answering questions. Uh, maybe some of you that are here have already heard from the team. So there's there's a team here that wants to help you join in. If you have questions, if you want to them to help them, you can reach out and also they might reach out to you. Okay, so this is an important slide and everything here is recorded. So we'll make sure that uh, you have this information. The second thing, let's say I've convinced you that you should join the directory, which I hope I have. If you have friends between your networks that might be interested, please let them know. Not everyone is attending this webinar. We need you to spread the word, the word and uh, actually tell everyone about the directory. Not many people know about it. And, and again, if there's any kind of difficulty in, um, in, in, in opting in, um, we can help you. Uh, you should know that there are already Alma institutions that have opted in, so um, I don't expect it to be a difficult process. Uh, so, uh, but still, again, we really want to make this easy. So if you need help, uh, there's a team here that can help you. In addition to that, there's a new video in the Knowledge Center. Uh, so if you missed any part of my demo, the video covers exactly what I showed you now, how you copy from uh, the directory a partner into your institution, and also how uh, the three different steps that I showed you uh, for joining in, uh, for opting in into the directory. Okay, and one more very important thing before we go, okay, before we leave back to questions, uh, this, this might lead to questions as well. On the uh, Alma May release, and I really want you to be aware of this, we've added to the configuration, in the configuration under general, there is an entry called data sharing profile from the May release. So this is something actually that you won't see now. Everything that I've shown up until today, um, uh, you will be able to see. There is a, um, um, a statement uh, that uh, where you can confirm that you will uh, that you're willing to make your holdings information um, searchable and visible to other Alma and Rapido institutions. Again, this is uh, only a statement, but it's very important with, because we might come with functionality in the future where you will be able to see uh, who how who. Um, holdings information from other institutions and get there's no personal data included. It's actually uh, how your institutions are working today. What your institutions are doing today is that um, if they don't find a resource between their in their systems, their resource sharing systems in Alma or in other systems, what they're doing is they're going to other institutions to their discovery to search for this very specific item that they want to see and um, they are seeing it through their discovery um, or through WallShare or in uh, many other, uh, you know, any, any way they can see it. Uh, usually this information is publicly, publicly available, um, but we, we are kind of um, stating now we're changing how things are being done and we want this. It's not that I have a development here uh, that will uh, make this available for you now at this point, but uh, we really want to to start uh, signing this agreement. It will help others in the future uh, if we already have this signed. So from the May release, and um, I, I do want to tighten it with the directory. The first 
part of the directories sharing your partner information. This is uh, an additional step that will happen in May, but uh, I not strictly directly uh, connected to the directory, but I think uh, that this is uh, important. I'm going to stop sharing to see if there are more questions that we can address. Um, so um, these were my slides. And let's see what we have here uh, for the minutes uh, that we have remaining. Thank you, people are asking, are answering uh, technical things, okay. Again, uh, there are many questions about how you define those sets and what you define. I do want to make sure that you understand that those sets today that you're creating um, are, 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 they're not mandatory. I do want you to create them but they're not mandatory. They might help you for farther networks that you might want to join, um, like Rapido customers that we have. But uh, today, uh, as I said before, the peer-to-peer -peer continues to work as before um, with the terms of use. Uh, so you establish new connections, connections, but behind the scenes, uh, Alma to Alma, it will be uh, the regular terms of use where you're marking your items uh, available for resource sharing, et cetera, the way you do it today. So there's no difference there, even though I, I am too asking you to create those sets. Um, oh, there's a great question here. Can we send messages through Alma to another library asking them to add us as a partner? Um, or can we get notified or, or would we need to communicate directly to the library? You know, this is the next development I want to develop. Uh, today, you will need to contact them and uh, ask them uh, to uh, tell them you've downloaded their partner record and they would you would like them to download uh, their partner record. There are some people that see this as an advantage. They feel more secure that... Uh, no, nothing's going to happen. It would be really nice if we could do this via the system. So I've taken note. Uh, I think this would be a next step. So as I said, it's uh, really we're talking about the first step, just making you making it easier to create these partners. But I believe this is really uh, creating uh, a basis for more developments that will come in the future. Okay. So uh, another good question, will students see the new institution's collections in Primo searches? No, for Alma, no, definitely no. Uh, this is, again, this is, uh, we haven't changed anything uh, on the way Alma looks. Uh, uh, in Rapido, things are different, but still, if, if you're working within a peer-to-peer -peer connection, also Rapido students will not be able to see those uh, collections there. Uh, okay, some more minutes. There's so many questions that I do want to try to address them. Okay, so uh, yeah, there's some answers here about using the blank form, right? You can continue to use the blank, the blank form that continues. Okay, uh, what is the difference? This is also a complete uh, seminar. What is the difference between joining the resource sharing directory and sharing the way that way versus Rapido? So what I would say here is AMA resource sharing is peer-to-peer -peer based, okay? You can always push a request to another broker if not found through your peer-to-peer -peer connections. Um, that's something that will continue to work in our mind in the same way. Rapido is a different story because Rapido is, is, is a broker in itself, which is different than Alma. So Rapido does connections differently, but Rapido also supports the peer to peer connection like Alma. So, um, well, well, I'm, so this big community here is, uh, probably also Alma. So I'm going to say. Again, your peer-to-peer -peer connections will continue to work. You're just enlarging your network in an easy way. And by the way, I have, have had conversations with many Alma um, resource sharing users, and they're trying to do this, they're doing this. So this will greatly help uh, 
uh, Alma communities, but Rapido to Alma can also be a peer to peer. So in that sense, it will be the same, like an Alma to Alma connections. Rapido has other ways of working because of uh, its broker uh, capabilities. And um, if there are two Rapidos connecting, uh, probably they will not need the peer to peer. They will work in a different way. Um, this is a very specific Rapido uh, issue. Uh, way of working, okay? One one as a broker and the other one as a peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, okay, excellent question. Every Guys, every question that you're asking here is so relevant. Can you update information in your member record, email participating items once you've set it up? And will this information be automatically picked up by anyone that has added you as a partner record? I really love this question. It, it has two answers. The first uh, uh, answer is no. Uh, the second answer is we already have this on our very close roadmap. So very soon, yes. Okay. Uh, so very, very soon, one of our upcoming releases. So uh, we call this dissemination of updates. So now if someone makes a change, we don't believe the changes are very common, but um, if someone changes something on their partner information, you will need to notify your friends that this has changed. But on a really, really close release, you won't need to notify. Again, regarding the participating items, there is no need for this dissemination if you're working with a, with a Rapido friend, because this will be updated. This is updated automatically with a Rapido friend in not a peer-to-peer -peer connection, in a pod type connection. That will be disseminated, no problem at all. Um, and again, if you're working with a peer-to-peer -peer Alma, your terms or use terms of use are used, uh, so that will also be reflected on the system. So the next development that we're having is actually the dissemination of the actual partner information. So if the shipping address changes or something changes in one of our upcoming releases, the address will be automatically updated on your um, on the on the partner record that was copied to the institution. So. Stay tuned for release notes on that. Okay, that will happen pretty soon. And uh, one more minute. Uh, wow. Okay, I, I won't have time because we have one more minute. Uh, and uh, there are many, many questions here that I won't be able to address. So uh, what I do want to, uh, I want to thank you for participating. The recording will be available and um, Please remember that there's this team that can answer these questions and, of course, help you if you're interested. Um, guys, I checked today who was in the directory, so I'm hoping uh, that after our little webinar, uh, there will be more uh, institutions in the directory. And also, um, I hope that um, if you have issues, you can contact that, uh, that email address. You might be contacted also by them, not only you who attended the webinar, but every Alma customer. And um, hope to see you soon, uh, maybe in another webinar, and to see you in the directory. So thank you all for attending.